Hello again! This chapter will explain a little about how Spring Valley Lake is organized and managed. As you may already know, SVL is organized as a Homeowners Association, or HOA. We are considered a large HOA. An example of a small HOA is a condominium or a housing project with less than 50 lots or homes. SVL has about 4,200 lots. HOAs share common amenities and properties which are available to the members and property owners. These amenities include the lake, three parks, many fishing areas, an equestrian center, and the community building or the clubhouse. The HOA manages and maintains all of these amenities. Another benefit of an HOA is the consistency of manicured properties. SVL has rules that have been developed by our own property owners which directs the appearance of all properties including your vacant land, your house, and the landscaping. Keep in mind that SVL stands for Spring Valley Lake, the community or geographic region, whereas SVLA stands for Spring Valley Lake Association, which is our HOA. There are four main documents that direct how SVL is governed. One very small document that is not included in those four is the Articles of Incorporation. This small document defines our California nonprofit corporation status. The most significant governing document is our Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions, or more commonly referred to as our CCNRs. This one document is like the Constitution of Spring Valley Lake. The next document is the Bylaws. They define the panel of people that direct SVL, also known as the Board of Directors, and it defines how elections are to be held. The architectural guidelines describes not only how houses are to be built, but also their appearance including the surrounding landscape. The rules and regulations defines the rules regarding our common areas such as our lake and parks. Here are what the covers of our four main governing documents look like. And here is an example of the inside of one of them. You should have received a copy of all these documents when you purchased your property here. It was the responsibility of your real estate agent and escrow officer. As a property owner, you are responsible for being familiar with the contents of these documents. If you do not have a copy of them, contact the association office or visit www.svla.com. So why did you choose to live in Spring Valley Lake? One of the main reasons why our community looks so good is because we are a homeowners association that has rules. Those rules, which are defined in our governing documents, are what we all agreed to live by when we purchased our property here. More reasons to live in an HOA include having the direct ability to maintain a safe, consistent, and tidy community. We have the ability to define and control the architectural standards and consistency of the houses built and maintained in our community. With these standards in place, our HOA has the direct ability to enforce our rules so that properties are well maintained and are kept looking great. As a result, we all enjoy the increased values to our properties by creating a community that is more desirable to live in as compared to non-HOA communities. Our HOA also gives us the ability to protect the quality of life that every owner chose when they purchased their home in this community. When justifying the benefits of living in an HOA, you have to ask yourself, what house would you rather live next to? This house? 
or this house, which was photographed elsewhere in the high desert. Our HOA is governed by a seven-member board of directors. Just like any other corporation in the United States, there is a president, vice president, secretary, and a treasurer. Each board member has a term of two years and can serve two consecutive terms before being termed out. Each board member is assigned to serve as a liaison to the committees. They act as a line of communication between the board and the committee, keeping the board updated with the committee's current work. One of the main roles of the board is to set overall direction and policy for SVLA. They are responsible for making the decisions and then tasking SVLA staff to carry out those decisions. Here is a board meeting in progress with the board sitting in the front, staff sitting to the right, and property owners watching in the audience. The Board of Directors holds a standard meeting once a month. As of 2011, standard meetings occur on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Open session meetings, where property owners are invited to attend, begin at 6 p.m. Open meetings are for conducting regular SVLA business and for staff to update the board of directors and the property owners on current events within the association. Closed session meetings, also known as executive session meetings, cover issues that cannot be discussed in public and property owners are not permitted to attend. These affairs include four subject areas, staff and HR issues, legal affairs, business contracts, and property owner discipline. Because it isn't possible for the board to learn and research all of the issues that face SVLA, committees have been formed to do such work and report back to the board. The following is a list of committees that are, or have been, in use here at SVLA. Some committees listed here may not always be active. Other committees, such as architectural and citation, are active and meet monthly and sometimes even twice a month. The Architectural Committee is responsible for reviewing all exterior changes to properties within SVLA according to the architectural policies and procedures governing document. This includes new construction, landscaping, house painting, etc. The Citation Review Committee reviews citations issued to property owners and is part of the appeal process when property owners challenge citations. The Communication Committee finds ways of improving the communication within the community. The Community Planning Committee helps the board with research for projects within SVLA. The Equestrian Estates Committee's sole purpose is to cover issues related to the equestrian side of SVL. The Governing Documents Committee meets when necessary to give the board recommendations on changes to our governing documents. The Governmental Affairs Committee monitors the activities of our neighboring governing agencies such as the City of Victorville and the Victor Valley College. The Lake Committee discusses issues concerning the lake and gives recommendations to the board. The Public Safety Committee discusses issues regarding the safety and security of our community. The Social Committee organizes and works with staff to put on all of the community's events. Read about the various events and any communications put out by the association such as the Breeze or website. The Budget or Finance Committee mainly recommends an annual budget to the board, but can also review financial statements periodically and make recommendations. From time to time, the board needs to create an ad hoc committee for special one-time only purposes. All property owners are encouraged to join a committee that addresses a subject matter that interests them. Committees are extremely important to the success and well-being of this community. 
Seven board members cannot run this corporation without help. Please participate in the process of governing your community. All board and committee meetings, as well as most activities, take place at the community building. See the geography chapter to see where it is located and the amenities chapter to see more interior pictures of it. The association strives to communicate to the residents of SVL. This is done in several ways. As of 2011, two different publications are sent out, the quarterly breeze and the monthly Shoot in the Breeze. Our website is www.svla.com and is updated with current affairs and events. You can sign up for the eBreeze, which is an email blast. From time to time, signs will be placed to announce upcoming events. And lastly, there are bulletin boards located in the post office and in front of the community building. Our HOA is operated by about 50 to 60 paid employees or staff. Starting with the general manager, he or she oversees SVLA's day-to-day -day operations and the staff. The GM is also the conduit between the board and the property owners, as well as the board and staff. Then there is executive or senior staff. There is one for each major department, including administration or the office public safety, maintenance and operations, and community services. Other employees include office staff, maintenance, grounds, public safety officers, etc. Here are some pictures of SVLA staff. This is a general organizational chart that shows the relationships between the board, committees, and staff. At the top, you have the board and committee members who are volunteers. Then you have the various staff members. These lines connect all the parties together, as well as defining the level of order from top to bottom. SVLA owns, maintains, and operates numerous pieces of equipment that help with the day-to-day -day operations of our community. Here are just a few of them. This section attempts to explain the governmental agencies that provide services such as water, sewer, street maintenance, law enforcement, etc. to SVL. It is complex and confusing, but we'll do our best to explain some of the details. Our community is a small island of county-governed land, which is sandwiched between the three municipalities of Apple Valley, Hesperia, and Victorville. So it makes it a little confusing as to which agency is responsible for maintaining what. The lake site of SVL is governed by San Bernardino County and our HOA. The equestrian side is governed by the Town of Apple Valley, funding coming from the county, and our HOA. Funding for our services comes from a county unit known as CSA 64. CSA stands for County Service Area. Some of this funding also applies to the equestrian side because Apple Valley used to be part of the county until it seceded in 1987. SVL is not associated or connected whatsoever with the city of Victorville. However, we share the same zip code.
Remember that this shows the boundary of SVL with the equestrian side overlapping into Apple Valley. So CSA 64 provides several services to the lake side. This includes our roads and pavement maintenance and street sweeping. Our residential water supply comes from wells maintained by CSA 64. Our sewer is also maintained by them and is connected to the Victor Valley Wastewater Facility near Oro Grande. Although they clean out our drains and V-ditches that empty into our lake, another county department manages the flood control along the Mojave River. The property taxes that we pay to the county are used to fund and pay for all of these services. This map shows our little county-funded island. Notice the portions that overlap into Apple Valley. Now, here are some examples of the items that CSA 64 maintains and how it affects our daily way of life here in SVL. Here are some other county services provided to SVL. One is law enforcement, which is provided by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. We also have the volunteer group known as COPs, which stands for Citizens on Patrol. County code enforcement enforces county-based rules and should not be confused with SVLA code enforcement, which enforces our governing documents. Animal control is also a county service. Fire protection is another county service and we have our own fire station located just south of our community. As mentioned, county flood control manages the levees along the Mojave River. Traffic enforcement on the streets of the lakeside are contracted by the county to the California Highway Patrol. The following are some examples of the vehicles you will see around our community that provide the services just mentioned. All of our county services are governed by a board of five supervisors. One of those five supervisors represents what is called the First District, which includes SVL as well as other parts of the Mojave Desert. This map shows the large area of San Bernardino County that the First District covers. We get to vote for our one supervisor, not all five of them from the other areas. The Board of Supervisors conducts a monthly meeting in downtown San Bernardino. If SVLA needs new or changed services, 
Either our staff or one or more of our board members converses with our county supervisor. Lastly, we are going to discuss how mail is delivered to SVL residents. This only applies to the lakeside. SVL lakeside properties have no home delivery, but the equestrian side does. Residents of the lakeside pick up their mail at the SVL post office. The post office has PO boxes, officially called SVL boxes, for property owners and tenants. The post office is located inside of the small shopping center located next to the south side of the marina. Our post office is actually a full service post office and anybody, not just SVL residents, can use it. Be advised that delivery companies such as UPS and FedEx will only deliver to your physical address, not your SVL box. You must provide them with your physical street address. Here is where the post office and SVL boxes are located. And here is what the SVL boxes look like. Hopefully these past 20 minutes have helped you better understand how our community of Spring Valley Lake functions and will help you to enjoy the lifestyle that it offers.